Hey guys, Scorch McDuck or SMD here with some more replay reviews of pubs I've played recently. Also, if you would like to buy private coaching, you can do it on Metify. The link can be found in the description. Or if you would like to support me and my team, we now have a merch store. And if you would like to buy some of the merchandise, you can find the link in the description as well. Okay, so in this game, I played Bristleback, which might seem really common at this point. But uh, I've been playing this hero since before it was meta. If you follow me or my team, you would know that. But yeah, it's a pretty strong hero in this patch. So uh, in this game, I saw Tiny Ench. I second phased Bristleback. And once again, like I said in the last video, I believe a Viper was banned. So there's not too many blind picks that are too scary. And they ended up getting Dawn and Tusk. So it looked really, really nice for Bristleback. The first two picks seemed good for me. And then the blind picks were also pretty good. Unfortunately, my team was my Death Prophet and my Hoodwink were fighting over mid. But Hoodwink decided to play 5 in the end and give mid to this Death Prophet, who I let have last pick. It wasn't the highest rank either. But then, uh, my, uh, uh, hopefully there's nothing too bad that I can't show on YouTube that they're saying. But this guy won it offlane and so did Alk. So he, or not the Hoodwink, by the way. It was a Snapfire, I think it was. Yeah, Snapfire was fighting for mid with Death Prophet and uh, decided to play 5, thankfully. But Hoodwink and Alchemist were fighting over the offlane. And the Hoodwink decided to feed down mid, and the Alchemist decided to just go AFK at minute zero, as you'll see shortly. Or maybe he tried to land at first. Yeah, he just AFKs and queues up a shadow, a shadow Amulet. But, uh, like I said, I saw two good heroes for my Bristleback, and then the blind picks were also really nice for me. With the uh, Dawnbreaker and Tusk coming out. So I decided I would try to play the game. And yeah, they lost Ursa, who was pretty decent against Bristleback, as... Or if you don't know, I guess I should say, Fury Swipes does, does more damage every time you attack a hero. So even though Bristleback seems really tanky, when he gets a lot of Fury Swipe stacks up, you can start to do a lot of damage every auto attack on the Bristleback and eventually kill him. But I play a lot of Bristleback, and I had some ideas of how to counter him, which is mainly buy, like, a Halberd. Ideally, if your team can buy Yules to help, that's good, too. And then obviously you just try and, uh, you always buy your Ags, but you just want to play really kitey. You want to just goo him and stay away from him rather than man fight him. Because obviously, like I just said, his Fury Swipes will own you. So, uh, I mean, with a bit of the game plan stated, I'll go over the lane a bit. So in this lane, since, uh, I do have, like, an intentional feeder and a guy who's AFK, my plan was to play really aggressive and try for kills. Normally you want to, like balance it you want to play for kills while also you know farming and not like dying but in this game i just want to play super aggressive i want to use all my mana and try and get kills and then die and it actually worked out super nicely we're against two strength heroes who have not the highest armor close do physical damage so i just want to use all my mana and kind of die yeah i bought two gauntlets here as you can see which normally i'll have a stick because you want to like be able to survive with a stick but i just want damage i just want to all in them kill them and then, uh, you know, like, uh, suicide, as you'll see here. So, look, I used all of my mana, all my HP, got a double kill. I walk over, buy a ring of health, and then I was going to suicide to the tower, but the tusk was here. So, you know, he gets the experience. But, uh, the lane's going really nicely at this point. So, I have, like, every single CS, pretty much. I've been using my quills off cooldown, so they're getting high stacks on them. I have no stick, but I have the extra HP from the gauntlets here. So yeah, I used all my mana, used all my HP, go and buy a ring of health, and then suicide. I think he salved me, which is unfortunate, but I have no mana. I, I don't I don't want to play the lane with a salve here. I just want to reset and come back with full mana, full HP. So now I come back, full mana, full HP, almost level 3, have a ring of health now, which is like really good. I'm really farmed. As you can see, the Earth is also free farm and mid's free farmed and getting kills. But uh, that's going to happen when you have an intentional feeder and a guy who's AFK on your team. But I'm still second highest net worth here because of the double kill I got. So I'm still just spamming quills. I want to use all my mana before I die, if I'm going to die. And uh, I'm spamming quills, getting all the last hits with quills. Get another double kill here with a dive. And then once again, I go and kill the creep wave, buy another item. And then I'm just walking to their tier 2 to suicide. I backpack my vanguard just so I die a little quicker here. And Tusk is getting these return kills, but I'm second highest net worth. I haven't lost any gold on my deaths because I bought my Ring of Health the first death and my Vanguard the second death. So this is going super well. I've gotten two double kills. I'm four and two. My two deaths are pretty much, you know, they're, they're like intentional suicides to the Tusk to get full mana and full HP. 
So, I mean, let's just double check. I was... Was I out of mana there pretty much too? Yeah, so I died. Oh yeah, I went back too far, I think. But uh, we'll see in a second, I guess. But I'm pretty sure I used all of my mana and all my HP again. So, just went really nicely. Yep, I used pretty much all my mana. I used the last one on some creeps, but I used most of my mana to get the kill. He tried to clarity me again. <laughs> Unfortunate. This guy wasted the clarity on a salve. But I just wanna, I just wanna reset and do the same thing again. So I'm, I'm almost keeping up with this tiny who has been fed five kills on the mid lane, and mid lane's creeps meet sooner. And I'm assuming they got more bounty runes level one, and since then because we have two people not playing the game, so my net worth is extremely impressive. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be down 3k gold. Our alchemist is gonna be sitting at zero last hits along with the hoodwink, who are both griefing the game. So they're trying to dive, just gooing now. Then I'm level four. I have a vanguard, pretty hard for them to pressure me without rotating more heroes to my lane, and they have not done that yet. I have a soul ring now, just spamming my spells on these heroes, playing really aggressive. Gonna get another kill here. Gonna chill. Don't really want to die anymore at this point. I have vanguard at mobile 5, my respawn's getting longer, and I have gold that I would lose, so that's just an early game tactic. It's pretty common on the mid lane if you watch high level mid players, I think I just missed that siege last hit too, which is unfortunate. But high level mid players, if they get a solo kill mid, they'll normally just run into the enemy's mid tower to die and just come back to the lane full HP, full mana. So now I want to start jungling. I feel like the enemies are going to start coming to pressure me. They took the bot tower really early because no one on my team was playing in the bot lane. So I'm just jungling. I want to play efficient this game. It's really important that you play efficient when you have like intentional griefers, I guess, which is uncommon maybe. Or maybe it's not in your games, I'm not too sure. But if your team's just like not playing well or you're behind, it's really important to play efficient, hit your timings, and then be able to fight. And I'll go over that a lot in this game. So I'm just trying to play super efficient in the jungle. The wave pushes in, I come back and try to catch some of the creeps. Missed a range creep there, which is unfortunate. But should get both of those, and I do. So I don't really want to show up to any of these fights. The enemies are super farmed, as you can tell. I'm the highest net worth in the game now because of the two extra kills I got in the tusk and those two double kills. And like I said, I spent all my gold on my two deaths. So I haven't lost any gold on my deaths, and I, so I'm pretty much 6-0 at this point. And I'm, so I'm the highest net worth against a team that is, has a tower, they're getting more bounty runes most likely than us, and I have two people who are intentionally griefing the game. So I'm just playing super efficient, dragging the waves away so my creeps can start to deal damage to their tier 1, and also I can use my quills on the lane creeps while I'm using it on the jungle by taking the lane creeps into the jungle with me. Yeah, but I can't defend these towers. I can't defend these pushes. I have two people AFK. We're going to probably be at an experience deficit on my team, as you can see, because of the intentional feeders and the fact they have more uh, free lanes and no denies and things like that happening. So I want to just play super efficient for my game. I don't want to show up to these early engagements because I'm not strong enough to fight uh, three versus five in this game. So I'm just farming. This guy's playing a little aggressive, try to connect here. But uh, yeah, just trying to farm super efficiently in this game. We used Exo, but I don't want to pressure towers. They have five people playing the game, and I don't. This was a little fortunate, I guess. I had a one stack here. Don't know how that happened. Looks like my snap fire did it. So, you know, good on him. We won our lane, and he stacked for me, so that's pretty nice. Killed it before the new spawn comes out, too. Versus running into our tri camp for some reason, and we get a nice kill on their carry and another kill on their tusk. So, like I said, my two devs are pretty much fake. I'm pretty much 7 0 and 1 right now on a game with two intentional feeders. I participated in 8 of our 9 kills, and uh, 7 of their kills are intentional for my team, so we only have. And 2 of my deaths are fake, like I said, so we pretty much have 1 kill right now. It's pretty or they pretty much have 1 kill. They have only killed the Death Prophet legitimately, and uh, we have, you know, 9 real kills. One of which my Death Prophet got, and the rest of which were on me. So they get another legitimate kill here, but. Uh, once again, not going to react to these, just trying to get really farmed, and I am getting really farmed. I'm the highest net worth in the game against a team who's getting, you know, fed by two people. Or, well, the Alex just AFK pretty much, but the Hoodwink has been feeding this entire game. Come bottom, once again, can't defend these tier 2s. We're too far behind because of the fact that we're playing a 3v5. Well, it's kind of worse than a 3v5 because the Hoodwink has been feeding kills too. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know how you would, you know add that up but it's like they pretty much have six players i guess it's a 6v3 or something like that so just trying to play efficient 
This guy has no tower. Good on my team. Apparently, we took the bot tower, I guess, with an exo in one of our rotations. So his team can't react to this, so we're just gonna run at them. They do try to react with a Dawnbreaker ult, but uh, we can still kill the core hero here. Dawn does TP. They used ult and he TP'd. But uh, once again, the enemies are pushing it, and I'm not gonna be reacting to this. They almost kill a tier 3 with their Meteor Hammer and their Ench Creeps. But I am not strong enough to fight a game where they are like a 6v3 or whatever you want to call it. So I am just trying to farm. I have a 13 minute Ags, which is a pretty insanely fast timing, especially considering I didn't have too many stacks. And I have Treads, which sometimes you'll go Brown Boots. But uh, in this game, I just wanted the extra HP and it, they're pretty good for farming with the Tread swapping for mana and things like that. So I went for the Treads here. I tried to do a double stack. It looks like I only got the Ancients here, but I'm just insanely farmed in a game where they just got a Roche. They have a tier two at minute, like they had it at like minute 11 or something like that. And I'm still the highest net worth, but I'm still not gonna show up to these tower defenses because there's just no point. I don't feel strong enough to uh, like 1v9 yet or whatever, or you know, 3v6 if you wanna go with what I was saying before. So I'm just trying to farm efficiently still, farming all the camps. Not too worried about dying because I'm really strong. And uh, I, I just see heroes on the map, I guess. So I'm playing aggressive, making sure I don't die. Here they try to kill me. Thankfully, the Ursa kind of messed up. So what he should have done, and I mean, this is Yawar. I guess I didn't really go over players, but you know, it's Yawar. This guy's a mid player. This guy's supposed to be a professional player, but he's speeding down mid because his lane got taken apparently. But so what Yawar could have done here, I think, is he could have just waited. I mean, if I'm really good, maybe I leave and that's what he was afraid about. So he wanted to slow me, but he could have waited for his Tusk's TP to finish or be closer to finishing here. But uh, he went on me so quick that I was able to TP. And I guess maybe I lucked out a bit. Apparently this guy's stuns through cooldown and he has a blink. So maybe uh, maybe your warrior thought this guy would just blink. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly, in hindsight, I haven't really looked at this replay before. Now, in hindsight, I'm probably playing too aggressive. Going for the wave is probably fine since I kill it pretty quick, but I should not stay and hit the siege because I would have died here. You are actually didn't really misplay. I think he just didn't really realize. Well, I mean, I guess he misplayed because he didn't realize this guy's stuns were cooldown. But it's like a really easy mistake that he made or whatever. And especially in pubs where there's low communication. If the Tusk said his cooldowns were, if he said his stuns were on cooldown, maybe you are should have waited, but he probably didn't. And he probably was just assuming the Tusk would stun me. So I got really lucky there, to be honest. That would have been, that would have slowed down my game a lot. I probably would have lost gold on that death, but I almost have my Sange now. I'm buying a Sange here just to help me kite the Ursa, and the fact that BKB has a 90 second cooldown now, which in a game where you don't really have people playing, is really bad. If you like BKB, they can just do whatever they want for the next 90 seconds. You need items that do more in this. I know a lot of people on like Reddit and lower MMR like Twitch chats and things like that will talk about how they don't like buying BKB because it's not fun and doesn't give damage, but there are some cases where that's pretty much, well, I don't know about the fun. I think winning's fun, but there are some cases where you do just need a bigger item that does more damage and has like no cooldown or a lower cooldown, like a halberd in this case. So I'm gonna be going for the halberd here. Lose a tier three, tier three was already low after the push from earlier when we were killing the tiny. Probably gonna lose a Rax here. Not the end of the world, getting really uh, rich over here. I did get surpassed by the Ursa in net worth when I died there, you know, I'm really farmed. He got a fair bit of gold from killing me. I was on a big kill streak there too, or just three killing spree, I guess, because of my suicides from earlier. But uh, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty bad here, but I'm the highest net worth once again, even though we just lost a Rax and we're just gonna look to fight them. Luckily our Alchemist, our ward had, gave us good vision here. And while they were dewarding, we went on them and we have Ags on Bristle, we're really strong. We kill their support, we chase down the cores, or another support, try to chase down a core. I guess he tossed me away, which is unfortunate because I had a ward there. Walk over, get killed on the Ursa too. I guess he went on our snap and got out of position. Get the outpost back before minute 19, which is nice. Gonna be getting more experience. And I mean, let's check the win probability actually, if I can figure out how to do that. So win probability is uh, not looking good. It's the green one, it looks like. I don't use this too often. They're at 92%, now they're at 80 after those deaths. Let me check it again. So uh, it started in our favor off of the draft, I guess, but once the intentional feeding happened, they didn't think we had much of a shot here. Yeah, 
not really going to be able to get the mid tier one because it's still pretty early into the game. Even though I'm super rich, but uh, yeah, not going to be able to get that tower. Just going to put on our side, trying to still farm efficiently. So when the next push or the next fight comes, I'll have more items and be able to be as strong as three heroes because two of my heroes are not playing the game. So I got my Ags, I got my Halberd, which I explained on why I bought the Halberd and the Ags already. Gonna buy a plate mail just for more armor to help me survive the Ursa. They're pretty low on magic damage on the enemy team. So I don't think I really need a BKB or a Hood or anything like that in this game. So just gonna tank up and be able to man fight the Ursa eventually or be able to kite him with Goose and survive if he has like a BKB or anything like that. We see this guy under a ward, we try to catch him. I think this doesn't work out. Or maybe it does because he blinked in for another kill on the intentional feeder. Low detection, he broke. Might get him. Looks like I'm too scared. Once again, I just want to play defensive. Hit my timings, then be able to fight. So they actually do try to turn on me. I'm just gooing and trying to kite. The Ursa blinks on me. I'm sharded in. You know, your bristle back, so you want your back to face them if you're not attacking. But right now I'm attacking, so I kill this guy. I'm trying to kite. I'm hitting this guy while he's silenced. I get pretty low, so I turn, and now I'm just spamming the goos and kiting him. So he also, the goos got purged. So I'm just gooing on max range pretty much is what I'm trying to do as you can see here look I'm trying to goo on max range there's like some fog so maybe I walked a little closer than I had to there but I'm trying to goo on max range of a ward here so it's pretty easy and then just man up when my halberds up was kind of my plan but I guess I didn't even need it I just had enough goos on him and I'm level 18 so I have the 10 warpath stacks with the high damage and I just manned up and attacked him so we want a really nice fight here and uh our alk and our Hoodwink started to buy items at this point, I guess, because, you know, even though they really wanted to lose, I guess they realized it was going to be free MMR if they played. So we try to force a Roche here, since we killed them all, and I believe we get it. It's the second Roche, so we get a shard. I mean, the enemies are playing sloppy, but a lot of people get lazy when they're against t intentional feeders. But I'm also, you know, I picked a good hero in a game where it's pretty uncountered. I got really lucky on the blind picks. And the enemies made some mistakes. Like right there, they probably could have been playing topside for Roche, but they did not. So now we got second ages. I get a free shard. My net worth's insanely high now. My AC's probably almost done, or is it already here? It's already done. My farm's just insane here. My Hoodwink's pushing out lanes while he's dying too. We have a gold lead now. I believe we haven't had it until we got that team fight win and that Roche on. So now, yeah, we just have the gold lead too. Now we're a bit stronger, like I've been saying this game, I want to play really defensive until I'm able to effectively be, you know, make up for the two heroes that aren't playing the game. And now they're all—they're also starting to play the game a little bit. Like I said, they're pushing lanes while they're dying and they're buying some items now. And they're not really, well maybe the Hoodwing's still feeding, but he's pushing out lanes while he's doing it. And the Alk's buying items and he like gave us vision in that one fight while he was shadowing loaded. So, uh... I can play aggressive now. I have Aegis, I have the shards, so I got extra net worth from that. My net worth, is, is, we had the net worth lead too, so, and a lot of that gold is on me. Literally all of it is, I'm um, 4,000 by the time, and we have a 3,000 net worth lead. So I'm pretty much three heroes at this point, which is what I've been playing for. Normally you don't want to do this, obviously. You want to show up to a lot of those tier two defenses and things like that, but when your team isn't playing, there's like no defense, right? Like we're just giving everything up because we don't have we have two missing players or whatever. Yeah, so now I got a tier two, we got an outpost. So now I just wanna go back on our side, push these lanes out with the mega creeps, probably take our outpost back. And if they show on the bot outpost or the bot ward, we can TP to the outpost or smoke across depending on how fast they're dewarding and taking it. So right now, yeah, I'm trying to play up in their face. We know where the enemies are. So I'm trying to just run at them with my ages. Hopefully we get the outpost back. My team killed the Tiny. My Death Prophet played pretty well, even though he was the highest rank. And my Snap and I won our lane, so it's pretty nice that we had some people who still played. I had another game around the same time as this one. This one was about a week and a half ago, where I had some people who were intentionally griefing, and the enemies also had an intentional griefer, but uh, no one on my team wanted to play. So I pretty much had four griefers, and the enemies only had one. So we lost that one. But I had two people who were playing here, so that was... Cool. So I saw the Ursa running out of the Simmons room, made a sentry here, so I started attacking him. Hobbered him, because I thought he would turn and fight me, but uh, he had the BKB, which is pretty good. Like I said, 90 second cooldown, he doesn't have it. And uh, But his teammate saved him, or both of them did, I guess. They helped him a lot. 
my team got two kills during that. And actually they killed the Tusk too as he was retreating. 46 seconds more on Aegis. I've just been trying to run at them and push lanes really aggressively with it. And so yeah, looking to high ground here and end the game if possible, if they take a bad fight. Aegis is timing out though actually, so we're gonna back. Gonna push these top lanes out again. Someone on their team disconnected and the enemies are probably really low on morale right now, so they're not even gonna pause. Even though two people on my team have been intentionally griefing. My net worth is insane. Aegis is gone. Doesn't really matter. Gonna buy an Abyssal now. I have enough defensive items with the AC's armor and the Halberd, so I'm not too worried that Ursa killing me, but the Abyssal, the Abyssal active is also pretty nice for helping me kill the Ursa before he ults. And kite him and his teammates and cancel BKB TPs and him running away when he BKBs. Dawn Breaker did reconnect though, almost 25, gonna give me a lot more right click damage if I can get it. But I do play too aggressive here actually. They had the break on the tiny here, which I didn't expect. So I got broken and just took way too much damage. If I didn't get broken here, they probably would all died. But, you know, they had the silver edge. I didn't really anticipate it. So they were able to burst me. Probably don't want to buy back here. Just give them a Rax. Rax don't really matter. We just have to win fights, and a second life will help us win the fight more likely. Actually, yeah, there's no way I buy back, right? Yeah, I don't think I do. We lose a range here. Luckily, they kind of focused the range, not the melee, and they're trying to fight now. So I'm able to TP in. They didn't even get Megas. I bashed the Ursa, like I was talking about, through his BKB. I didn't even have to help. I couldn't help him because of the BKB. But I bashed him, killed him. They didn't get Mega Creeps. Walked down mid. Luckily, these guys are playing sloppy again. Roche is up. We're gonna get another Roche here. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be allowed to spend my gold if I want to, because I won't need buyback. We got a. What did we get? A refresher shard. That's his third rush, right? A cheese. So, oh no, a refresher shard and a cheese, obviously. But uh, yeah, cheese and refresher over ags in this game. If there was an ags, I probably just would have taken it and sold mine. To be honest. I just need really high net worth to win this game. But uh, yeah, we got the Aegis. Gonna push down mid. Get another lane at Rax. They're trying to split push on the Tiny, so we either had to force Throne or stop him. I'm not sure if we saw him in the game. I don't really remember. Like I said, this was a week and a half ago. Now we definitely see him. The lanes are pretty pushed out, though. He was trying to go with the top wave being in, but it wasn't in yet. I found a gem here randomly. Don't know who's that was or how I got there. But it's gonna be pretty nice because the Tiny has invis. So yeah, I have Aegis. I have gem. I guess I can buy this out with my Aegis, but maybe I still want to be a little safe with buyback, so I back my Halberd. So my eggs. See this guy under my gem, Abyssalum. He buffed back in the last fight, I believe, actually, too. So, and I bash him while he's TPing, which is, you know, things are just going well. I mean, I'm itemizing well, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, we got the bash there. So no buyback on Tiny, no buyback on Dawn. Not sure if we knew Dawn had no buyback, but I'm pretty sure we knew the Tiny doesn't have it because he used it. Uh,. Yeah, Dawn just doesn't have gold, but we knew Tiny used it. The Earth is trying to cut the waves, but we have a Halberd, or not a Halberd, we have a Solar Crest, mine my 25, our damage is pretty insane, we also have AC. So, we're able to just end here, I believe, through the backdoor protection. Yeah, as the Ursa dies. So, uh, pretty interesting game. I had two people refusing to play the game from the start. And then eventually they sort of played it a little bit once they realized we were going to win, most likely. But uh, I'm against Yawar. He's a good player. In last pick, he tried to counter my hero. But yeah, I'm laning you know, some people top, and they played pretty poorly. And I mean, I played pretty well. I explained my reasoning for why I was playing aggressive. And uh, you know, maybe there's a bit of luck involved with the fact that we got that double kill, and I bought my item and got that another double kill, and then killed the Tusk two more times. And they were playing pretty sloppy around the Roshan spawning. But, uh, won a game here, three versus five. You know, it's not the highest average game, but a lot of people watching probably aren't even immortal, if I had to guess. So, you know, you play well and pick well in your games, especially at low MMR. You can win with, you know, bad players. A lot of people, a lot of people call bad players intentional griefers. These guys were literally intentionally feeding and AFK'd with a Shadow Amulet, and I still managed to win. 
So if you have bad players and you just focus on yourself and try not to show up to bad fights, you should be able to win games.